Welcome back. This is the last installment to the one sample hypothesis testing um, section. And we are going to put everything together and actually apply hypothesis testing to a number of examples. The first page summarizes what I've gone through in the last video, or at least much of it. It's got um, the general possibilities of the test statistic. And so if you are making an inference about means, then you need to decide whether sigma is known. If so, you're doing a Z test. If it's unknown, you're going to be doing a T test with n minus one degrees of freedom. And if instead what you're actually making an inference about isn't the population mean, but is instead the population proportion, then you're going to be doing a Z test also with a slightly different formula than that of the mean. And that is the third formula here. Again, the steps to hypothesis testing. First, you want to state your hypotheses. Then you want to compute the appropriate test statistic. You can get the critical value first. I like to do that third. So either the critical value or the p-value. In your third step, you don't need both, just one. Finally, make a decision. And then lastly, interpret what your decision means. So let's jump right into it and take a look at the first problem here. As you read through, you could see that I've underlined some information that sent signals to me as to um, aspects of what I need to do for this particular problem. So let's read it through together. It says the president of FGCU believes that undergraduates have, on average, a GPA of 3.00. And so this sentence tells me what is it that I want to investigate, and it actually indicates the symbol and the symbols that I want in my hypotheses. And so the have means it is versus it isn't the value of 3.00. So that's what I have in my first step where I state the hypotheses. I've got mu is three in the null. Remember the equal component always goes in your null. And then the inequality detail goes in your alternative hypothesis. Continuing on, the distribution of GPA scores for FGCU students is approximately normal with a standard deviation of 0.4. So this is written very generally. It's about the population of FGCU students. And so I could tell that that standard deviation is going to be sigma not s. Again, because we're not even told what the sample is. We're told something broad about all students at FGCU. In the third sentence, a teacher asked by the president to check whether his opinion is true, randomly selects 36 students. So finally, we're getting to the sample. There's 36 students in the sample, so that's our little n, and records their GPA. The mean GPA of the sample is 2.800 or 80. And so that is X bar. Does the evidence support the president's opinion? Let alpha be 0.01. And so here, what I just revealed is the details that I got from this context with appropriate notation. And again, as I talked through while I was reading this, I indicated how I deduced what, which group each detail came from and thus what the appropriate symbol is. Now, because sigma is known, a z-test is what we should be doing. After we state the hypotheses, which we did a moment ago, now we can do in step two, computing the appropriate test statistic. Because this is an inference for mean, I am going to be using z equals x bar minus mu over sigma over root n. And so here I've plugged in that detail. So x bar is 2.8, sigma is 0.4, n is 36. And I put an arrow in showing where that three in the top right part of the formula came from. And here's the key as to why our decision, and I said this in the last video, our decision is always either to reject the null or fail to reject the null. So the decision's always with respect to the null hypothesis. And it's because in a hypothesis test, you actually start off assuming the null is true. And so either the evidence is <laughs> agreeing that the null is true, which is where you would fail to reject, or it's saying something's not right. 
this doesn't make sense. The null can't be true, so reject it based on what the data are saying. Because we need to find a value for mu, mu according to the null when you're starting off assuming it's true, mu says, or the null says, mu can be three. That's why you have to have the equality aspect, the equality symbol, less than or equal to, equal to, or greater than or equal to in your null hypothesis. If you mistakenly put, let's say, mu less than three in your null, then you don't know what value you should, you should use. It's clearly not three because you're saying use less than three. So is it 2.9? Is it 1.7? Is it 0.42? You know, it's, it's a guess. But if there's an equal part in your null hypothesis, you can take that exact value. And so that's the, uh, the reasoning behind why I've been emphasizing, put the equal component into your null hypothesis. When you calculate this, you should get negative 3.00. Again, I write two decimal places, even if it's a nice integer, just out of practice, because that's what the standard normal table uses. In step three, you have a choice between getting a critical value or a p-value. I'm going to demonstrate the p-value approach here, which we talked through in the last video. So remember, the p-value is the probability of being more extreme than what was observed. And what is observed is the test statistic. More extreme in this case is because it's two-tailed, it's either more less than or too further to the left of negative three or further to the right of positive three, the mirror image. And by symmetry, both of those probabilities are the same. And so I'm going to do two times, two times the probability that Z is less than negative three. And you can see that detail right here and using your standard normal table you should at this point be able to find and confirm that the probability or the area to the left of negative three is 0 0.0013 so make sure you could find that on the standard normal table when you multiply that by two you get 0 0.0026 which is your p-value and that's pretty small in fact it is smaller than Point oh one, which is your alpha in step four. And because that relationship holds, we reject the null hypothesis. And again, this was a detail discussed in the previous video. If the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, you reject the null. So finally, what does that mean? This is your first time seeing an interpretation. What this means, well, if you reject the null, then you have sufficient evidence. That's the first detail I'd be looking for. Reject the null, sufficient evidence. Fail to reject the null, insufficient evidence or not enough evidence of what? Now you interpret the parameter in context. So the parameter of interest here was mu, and mu represents the mean GPA of all FGCU students. And so here we say there is sufficient evidence that the average or mean GPA of FGCU undergrads so this is excluding the graduate students, um, is different from or is not equal to 3.00. And so I always interpret whether I reject or fail to reject, always interpret with respect to your alternative hypothesis, which in this case has a not equal to sign. So this is your first example of completely going through all the steps of a hypothesis test. Let's go through a couple more. I'm going to jump to problem three here. This one, John loves his college's library. It's clean, quiet, and the books appear to be very modern. In particular, he suspects that the books tend to be less than 20 years old. And so in this case, this is indicating a particular direction that his claim is. So his claim is the alternative hypothesis and there's going to be a less than sign in there, according to the second sentence here. Continuing on, it says he obtains 30 books, so there's our N, from the library and records the publication date for each. The average age of the sampled books is, so that's X bar is 23.8 years, with a variance of, and so this coming from the sample is S squared, that is 67.5 years. 
does John deserve to be proud of his college's library based on the age of the books inside? Support your answer with a hypothesis test. All right, so first thing, we write down what we know, and what we know is that N is 30, there's 30 books. X bar again is 23.8. And in the same sentence, we are told that the sample variance is 67.5. So because we don't have sigma, we know that we're gonna be doing a t-test here. Now, alpha wasn't given, but just like in a confidence interval where the default is 0.95 for one minus alpha, the default here is 0.05, so it's it's going to be alpha. In step one, state your hypotheses. Well, he collected um, book ages, and we got an average, and so your hypothesis is going to be the spectrum mu. And again, his claim is that the books on average are less than or younger than 20 years old. So that's why the less than sign is in our alternative hypothesis. In step two, we know we're doing a t-test. So using that formula, we plug in x bar, we take mu from the null hypothesis. Remember that we want s, not s squared. So that's why I have the square root of 67.5 on the bottom over root n, so the square root of 30. And when you calculate this, you should get 2.533. Oh, at least two or three decimal places with t-scores. T um, the table, it depends on which table you're using, but usually they are around three decimal places long. Now that we have the test statistic, we can get the p-value or critical value. And when you're doing this manually without a calculator or software, doing the critical value approach for a t-test is the easier path. So when you look up that critical value, you should find the value of negative 1.699. Now the T table will give you positive 1.699, but I know it should be negative because it's a left held test. And so hopefully some of you thought of that. And that's why I've got the negative value and the region shaded on the left side. I also know it can't be left from 1.699 because alpha of 0.05 is really small. And if I were looking at the region from, from the positive side all the way to the left, or I think from your impression that way, that's going to be quite a lot of area, greater than 50%. So I know it's got to be a small piece. Now, 2.533 is way on the right side. It's very far from that yellow rejection region. So based on that, I know that we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So we, or sorry, fail to reject the null hypothesis. We are not inside the rejection region. What does this mean? Because we fail to reject, there is insufficient evidence that mu, mu is the average age of books in this library. And according to the alternative hypothesis, there's insufficient evidence that that average age is under 20 years old. And so that's what we learn in this problem. Again, this one is same process. We did the critical value approach instead of the p-value approach, just because it's it's easier um, with a t-test and without software. And we knew it's a t-test because we have s, not sigma. And we know we have s or s squared because the one, two, three, four, fifth sentence says the average age of sampled books is this with this variance. And so we know that that particular value of 67.5 came from the sample. That's how you have to think about this. I've got one more that I want to do together. Let's jump to problem five. Here it says that a recent news article revealed that the percentage of Americans that smoke cigarettes is less than 25%. This is surprising, and so you gather data by asking people at random whether they smoke or not. 80 of the 100 people asked said that they do not smoke cigarettes. Is the news report correct at the 2% significance level? So what do we get from this context? Well, we know that N is 100. 100 people were surveyed. P hat, I did from the smoker's perspective. And so because we have in the first sentence that it's looking at the percentage of smokers is less than 25%, when 80 of 100 say they do not smoke, that implies that 20 of 100 do smoke. 
And so that's where I get my 20 out of 100 is 0.2. You can do this from the non-smoker's perspective and use 0.8. But in that case, you would change your hypotheses. Instead of comparing to 0.25, you'd compare to 0.75. So it, a good, it is a good approach to take. And I welcome you to investigate that and decide to see if you could figure it out. Your decision should be the same, and so should your interpretation. But your test statistic is going to be negated. But continuing on from the smoker's perspective, with p hat being 0.2, q hat is going to be the complement or 0.8. Because this is a proportion that we have, I know our hypotheses are going to be with respect to a proportion, and I know that our test statistic will be a z test. And so the hypotheses, according to the first sentence, we believe or the claim is less than 0.2 or 0.25. And so that's in our alternative hypothesis. And the Z statistic is calculated as follows. Again, your P, the value of P comes from your null hypothesis. So that 0.25 gets plugged in in top right. And you're using P and Q inside the square root in the denominator. Don't forget that subtle change from the confidence interval formula. And you should get negative 1.15. Here, let's go ahead and look at the p-value approach. And I also did the critical value approach just to demonstrate it. You only need one. But let's look at the top line that I just revealed here. The p-value is the area to the left, because that is the symbol in your h1, to the left of negative 1.15, which is your test statistic. And that's going to be a relatively small area of 0.1251. And that came, again, from your standard normal table. Now, it's not small enough. It's not less than or equal to 0.02, your alpha value. And so in this case, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, which is step four. Now, the critical value approach would give you the same decision. And I've got that in the picture below. So the critical value from looking up in the Z table, you should get about negative 2.05. Negative 1.15 is to the right of that. It's not inside the yellow rejection region. And so that's also indicating that you failed to reject the null hypothesis. What does that mean? Well, that means that there's insufficient evidence that the percentage of Americans that smoke cigarettes is less than 25%. So. There's not enough evidence supporting the news article. At this point, pause the video. There's problems, let's see, two, four, and six and seven for you to attempt on your own. And so I'd like you to pause, try to attempt all of those before you start the video back up. And at that point, you'll be able to see the answers. Give it a shot. All right, let's see how you fared. So for problem two, a researcher study, research study examined the effect of antioxidants on the cognitive skills of elderly people. 25 subjects received the blueberry supplement for six months and were then given a standardized test to measure their cognitive skill. Typically, elderly adult scores will form a normal distribution with a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 20. So this gives you your hypothetical mean and a value for sigma. The researcher expects that the supplement will improve. So that gives you a direction, cognitive performance. If the mean score of the subjects is 87, there's your X bar. Is this sufficient evidence to conclude that the supplement works at the 5% significance level? So there is the summary of the information, the statistics that was given in this problem. Now, I know I wrote mu is 80 there. That is the mean of the population without supplements. And so we want to know if things have improved with the supplement. And so that's how I know to relate it to 80. In particular, the alternative should be greater than 80. Hopefully, many of you got that set up correctly. In step two, because sigma is what you have, you should have done a Z test. Now you may have gotten the same value doing a T test just because the formulas are very similar, but the notation is important. So don't avoid writing Z um, or T if it happens to be a T test, which 
I chose to go the p-value route fairly easy with a, a z test and so we want the area to the right of 1.75 which if you did the p-value approach you should get about 0 0.0401 and that is less than or equal to an alpha of 0 0.05 so you would reject the null hypothesis if you did the critical value approach and you rejected the null hypothesis hopefully you did that correctly the decision would be the same. Obviously, your comparison would be comparing to something other than 0.05. And so what does this mean? This is the part usually students dread doing, interpreting. Well, we rejected the null, so there is sufficient evidence that antioxidants are effective or improve cognitive performance among elderly. So that was number two. Let's see how four went for you all. The company that produces Brand X batteries claims that they are better than, so there's your direction, other common brands which have an average lifetime of 17 hours. And that's the value you're going to relate to in your hypotheses. And the better than implies you want a greater than in this second problem too. This is surprising. And so you gather data by asking, oops, sorry, jumped problems there. The next sentence is a sample of 10 Brand X batteries, there's your N, was obtained and it was found that they last on average 20.2 hours, there's your X bar, with a standard deviation of 5.417. That came from the sample, so that's your S. Is there sufficient evidence at the 5% level of significance to say that Brand X batteries are superior to existing brands? So again, you were looking for better than and better than or superior means last longer or greater than. Summary of the notation and their corresponding values I just revealed. Because it's S, you're doing a T test in this case with nine degrees of freedom and you should get 1.868 around, which your critical value would be 1.833. Now, common mistake with this specific instance is because 1.833 is close to 1.383 in the table. A lot of times students might look at the wrong one or, or just recall the wrong one. And so just be careful when you're using the TEPA table, make sure you're looking in the correct row, correct column, and you're pulling the right value. But you should get 1.833 to be the critical value here. It should be positive because this is a right tail test. And 1.868 is to the right of that. It doesn't matter how close it is, it just is to the right. So you, you do reject the null hypothesis, which means that there is sufficient evidence that Brand X batteries last longer than existing brands. So they are superior. Number six, this is a problem that you've seen before. It's a coin toss, tossed 10,000 times, 5,167 of the tosses are heads. And we want to prove now using a two-tailed hypothesis test with alpha 0.01, prove that it is or is not a fair coin. So we've gone through before that N is 10,000, P hat is 0.5167, and alpha is given to be 0.01 in this case. Here we want to know is P 50% or not. So if it's fair coin, then P could be 0.5. If it's not a fair coin, if it's biased, then it can't be. Since this is inference about proportion, you should have done a Z test and you'd get a fairly large value of 3.34. You're likely going to reject the null here, but let's go ahead and do the critical value approach in this case. You could do the P value Remember, it would be two times the probability of being greater than 3.34 or two times the probability Z is less than negative 3.34. Um, you should get a pretty small answer, probably somewhere around 0 0.0008 or 0 0.004, somewhere around there. Um, but in this case, doing the critical value approach, 2.575 plus or minus is our critical values. Uh, they are our critical values. And 3.34 is inside the rejection region. It happens to be in the right tail. And so we do reject the null hypothesis, which means that there is sufficient evidence that the probability of heads is not. It's something other than 50%.
which means this coin is biased. Finally, the last problem that you had to attempt on your own is number seven. A survey was conducted that randomly asked 30 students at FGC if they were raised in a household with a cat. And so there's your N in words, 30. A lot of times students will look for numbers, but sometimes, you know, the, uh, the number may be written in a word. And 20 of those surveyed responded yes. So 20 of 30, there's your P hat, um, had or grew up with cats. Can we say that the majority of FGC students grew up with a pet cat? Well, majority would be more than 50%. And so that's what we're looking for in our alternative hypothesis. And this is going to be a Z test because it's a test for proportions. And so there is your test value of 1.83. So I happen to have done both approaches, the critical value and the p-value approach. Let me reveal the critical value approach first. Here, it's a right tail test. The critical value when alpha is 0.05 by default, because it's not given, is 1.645. Our test statistic of 1.83 is further to the right, so we reject the null hypothesis, which means we reject the null. Right? So. And I know I just said that twice, but let's look at the p-value method. P-value is the probability that z is greater than or further to the right. Again, same symbol as in the alternative hypothesis. Further to the right than 1.83. This by symmetry is the area to the left of negative 1.83. I only did that because I know the standard normal table gives us um, areas to the left of negative values. And this area is 0.0336. That is smaller than alpha of 0.05. So that doubly confirms that you reject the null hypothesis. Remember, in practice, you only need to do one of those approaches. You don't have to do them both. So what does this mean? That there is sufficient evidence that the majority of FGCU students grew up with a pet cat. And so. Hopefully this was a good amount of practice and you did all right on your own or figured out what your mistakes were. A lot of times, again, the hardest parts are reading comprehension, reading the context, knowing what the information, the important information is and assigning them correct notation. And again, that aspect really just comes from distinguishing whether that information came from the population or from the sample. And so that's why understanding the difference between population and sample is critical and knowing what symbols come from each group is also very helpful. Take care.